During the month of June, any donation you make to the Lion Hearts COVID-19 Street Project will double thanks to the staff of the Department of Emergency Medicine at Queen's University, the Kingston Health Science Centre and the Springer family. Joining me now is Travis Blackmore, the Executive Director of Lion Hearts Inc. and Dr. Messenger, Head of the Department of Emergency Medicine. We're looking at something very exciting happening during the month of June. I'd like to speak to you about the Hometown Heroes fundraiser. But first, Travis, I would like you to talk a little bit more uh, about Lion Hearts Inc. and what's happening in Kingston. It was established in 2014, I believe. But during the COVID time, um, you're seeing an increase in activity. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So in 2014, we began as uh, essentially a, a mass food gathering and distribution project. Uh, many of our partners you would know, such as Costco, uh, Starbucks, Little Caesars, uh, Providence Care Hospital, um, so on and so forth. There's a lot of partners that we've managed to have the pleasure to work with over the last five years. Uh, last year, we gathered and distributed more than $2.3 million worth of food back into the Kingston community. And uh, so essentially you could look at us as a charity version of Cisco or, or some other food distributor of that nature. Now, fast forward into this year, into 2020, and uh, we had been piloting a to-go meals project and as COVID-19 began to affect our community, we saw the withdrawal of some of the services in the community, in particular regards to the evening dinner service. And uh, we brought forth an idea to some of our charity partners and St. Vinny's and a few others and just said, you know, would this fill a gap in our community to be able to offer to go meals during the dinner hour? Of course, that was met with, with warm reception and we approached the city of Kingston and public health, et cetera. And on March the 18th, we began serving to-go meals in McBurney Park. And what began with 37 meals per night, uh, now here we are into the month of June and we are well over 700 meals being served each and every day, seven days a week. Now, not just at McBurney Park, but at four different locations. Uh, in fact, just last evening, we crossed a milestone of just over 40,000 meals served since March 18th. And that's in the Kingston area? That 100% right, yeah. Wow, wow. So uh, on top of the meals being served and the expansion of where you're serving them, what else is, do you contribute during that time? There is a meal that is prepared, but we call them to-go meal packages. And in there would be a meal for someone. There'll be a loaf of bread, perhaps from one of our partners, Cobb's Bread, which we're proud to partner with for many years, as well as some water or things for the next day. For instance, some oatmeal, uh, something to not just be a one meal sustainable thing, but something to bring them through potentially the next day or, or further, if, if we can at all do that. Uh, but some of the things we're seeing as people come through line uh, through the lines are uh, this sort of pandemic is not just hitting our poor of the poor. Uh, it is unquestionably. But we're starting to notice that it really is no respecter of a, of a particular demographic. And what I mean by this is, I believe the statistic at this point is over 20% of Canadians are unemployed. And a vast majority of people in our society live paycheck to paycheck. And if you happen to be unemployed at this point and you were in that category, there's only a number of weeks that can go by before things become urgent. Uh, so we're noticing that through the line, people are coming that normally wouldn't necessarily need something like this. So we're proud that we get to the opportunity to provide maybe a helping hand just through this time for them. Uh, and it may, again, you know that I mentioned earlier, we have many partners throughout the city and working with the city. And we provide that listening ear that you mentioned earlier. 
sometimes people are not always aware of the other programs that are happening in the city. And we listen to what they have to say and we're happy to point them in any direction that might uh, help get them through this difficult time. Are you finding that there are results from you providing that information to them? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the folks that come through the line, they're very appreciative of not only the meals, but becoming uh, more aware of things that are happening in the community that they can take advantage of 100%, yeah. How are you protecting the staff and the volunteers that are now providing more and more services to people coming through? Well, safety, of course, during this time is paramount. Uh, not just for our own volunteers and for the program to be sustainable, but also for those that are accessing the program. So our, our safety and policies and procedures are actually quite extensive. And we've worked a lot with public health to make sure that they've been brought up to date each and every step of the way so that we're actually overcompensating if we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and when a project gets to this magnitude, um, we wanna do everything we can to sustain it and keep the safety of those that are volunteering and the public. What do you do with things that you can not provide that have been donated to you? So let's say food that um, you don't wanna go to waste. What do you do with that food? Sure. So COVID kind of sent us all for a curveball. And during this whole time, we actually have not been able to take donations of food from the general public. We've only been able to accept those donations of food through certified food handlers, i.e. Costco or Findlay or someplace that's certified to carry that. Normally, outside of COVID, you could, uh, you know, run a non-perishable food uh, gathering project of some kind and donate it to us and we'd be super grateful but since we can't guarantee the safety of where any of that comes from that's what's really changed the landscape not just for us but for many charities that are operating during this time but to answer your question more directly mm -hmm. uh if we're ever in a scenario where we've received some food that is not consumable for the public we actually have partners that are pig farmers and they will come and pick up that food so that it does get recycled. And, um, you know, we are very happy to, to say that we're a green uh, company, if you will. <laughs> right. Thank you. Um, Dr. Messenger, I want to um, ask you this question. What attracted you to this charitable organization and the fundraising that will be occurring through the month of June called Hometown and Heroes. We're really excited uh, that we've been able to partner with Lionhearts on this project. Um, this uh, initiative sort of had its roots in the desire of the doctors and staff in my department to really acknowledge and thank the Kingston community for the support that we have uh, been on the receiving end of over the last few months. Um, there, there's been a massive outpouring of support and appreciation to healthcare workers. Um, and, and that's left us uh, feeling incredibly humbled, uh, incredibly appreciative. Uh, it's been a huge support for us at a difficult time. Um, and what that in turn has motivated is a strong desire to give back and to acknowledge that um, we are still a, a very privileged and fortunate group in this community. Um, despite our job being more difficult, we recognize that we are lucky people who still have jobs to go to. Um, and uh, we recognize that a lot of people in this community have suffered financially uh, and have been put in really vulnerable positions as a result of loss of employment, loss of access to other services. And it was really important for us to find a way to acknowledge um, uh, our thanks in a way that helped the community. And, and Lionhearts particularly came to our attention as a volunteer-driven Kingston community-based organization that really does reach out to and provide care and support to uh, a population that very much resembles the vulnerable people we see day to day in the emergency department. And so in many ways, the street project was a natural partner for us as we sought to give back. 
who do you, um, how do you get folks to contribute that you are working with in your departments, Dr. Messenger? So uh, I'm pleased to say it was not a difficult uh, job to fundraise uh, within our department at all uh, for this initiative. As I say, we're uh, a group uh, that's uh, incredibly grateful for the support we've received recently. And when uh, a few of our members put this idea forward that as a group, we should uh, make a donation uh, to and pledge support for a community organization, uh, uh, there was uh, not a single voice of dissent uh, w within our group. Uh, everyone felt that this was the way we wanted to go. And again, uh, the symbolism of supporting an organization that's providing food when we've been on the receiving end of restaurants and, and uh, places dropping off food and coffee to the emergency department for our staff seemed like a really great fit. And uh, you know, we as a, an academic department at Queen's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, our physicians would normally be supporting a lot of um, uh, departmental activities that haven't happened this year, travel to conferences, um, graduation dinners for, for our learners and, and end of year celebrations. Uh, and, and we said, you know, that funding should go to say thank you and, and, and help. And, and there was broad agreement from our group that yeah, um, uh, this year we will we will use that money uh, to support our community. And so um, uh, the physician group uh, initially was able to raise uh, $25,000 and we put that challenge out to our uh, to our group and to staff in the emergency department as well. And and we're able to raise the total of $35,000 uh, to support Lionhearts. And, and we've been really uh, delighted that uh, the Springers have uh, come forward and have matched that uh, pledge uh, to create a, a seventy thousand dollar pledge of funds that uh, is available to match community donations this month. Thank you, uh, Travis. Let's go back to the exciting fundraiser that is occurring for the month of June. And can you give me a bit more detail about who's involved? Especially, uh, I'm very interested in hearing about the superstar hockey team. <laughs> uh, I was quite uh, happy as well, you know, and like the good doctor said, and uh, to have the Springer family come along and want to do this for the community was just, I mean, uh, on the Lionheart's end, we're just really humbled and grateful to be able to work side by side with these amazing folks and what they do day in, day out, not just, not just during COVID, but all day, uh, every day, all year. And um, so it's a very special thing. And to kick off that, that June fundraiser, the Hometown Hero campaign, uh, we were approached by Jane Hefford, uh, five-time Olympic uh, medalist, four-time gold with Team Canada women's hockey, just, just incredible. And the PWHPA coming through and donating 5,000 to kick off the campaign. Um, I mean, what a, what a, what a humbling thing. I've said it a hundred times. I'll, I'll eat humble pie all day long. Cause it's just, uh, it's phenomenal to see people come together, you know, during this time, I think it's a real Canadian thing to come together and you seeing it, it happen, not just, uh, with words, but in action and partnerships all the way through. And it's just a uh, privilege to be a part of this. So tell me where people need to go to donate during the month of June. Give us a few directions on how that is to happen. Absolutely. The easiest way to do this is to go to our website, which is lionheartsinc.ca, lionheartsinc.ca, and there's a backslash hero. And that actually has all of the press release as well as the easiest way for you to contribute to this project and receive a taxable uh, receipt as well. Um, and if you want to pay some or donate some other way, if you want to do it through e-transfer or mail a check, all of that pertinent information is at lionhearts.ca backslash hero. Um, so um, again, when we're, we're talking about um, meeting donations and the needs of the community for this wonderful fundraiser. Do you have a goal in mind? Yeah, so our goal is 70,000. 
uh, because that's what we've been able to have between the good doctors and the Springer family uh, collaborating together on this. And if we can raise 70,000, it'd be matched. And that way we'll see 140,000 go back into the COVID-19 street project and help feed those of our vulnerable neighbors and friends. Yeah. I'd like to thank you, Travis and Dr. Messenger for coming on our show today and providing us with more information. Um, uh, your program is valuable, Travis, um, and I wish you all the best. And uh, we hope to hear what the final number is at the end of June. That's wonderful. Thank you, April. Thank you, Dr. Messenger. Your whole team is uh, just admired by our team. Thank you very much. And thank you, April. You're, you're welcome.